you're watching study with sudhir this is your digital classroom my name is ts sudhir we are looking at crossing the bar this is one of the poems in the isc class 12 english literature syllabus and the poem is written by alfred lord tennyson a very important poem uh, in the context of world poetry in general and that's what will give you an idea about what place it really holds in the when we are talking about poetry in general in the world now alfred lord tennyson who died in 1892 and I'm telling you the year of his death with a particular reason was the most renowned poet of the Victorian era and more than any other Victorian writer as his note in your textbook would say Tennyson has seemed the embodiment of his age both to his contemporaries as well as to modern readers now uh, he was a poet laureate and this poem was written in 1889 that means three years before he passed away and this poem is in a sense preparation for his demise you know it's almost looking forward to his death and what would possibly happen when he actually crosses the bar that is crosses over to afterlife so this is a story which has deep religious overtones as well and it seems as if the poet had some kind of a premonition premonition as in some kind of an indication some kind of an inkling that his end was very near right Tennyson wanted this particular poem and note this and you would do well to actually include this point in a longer critical analysis of this poem kind of question which would be for 15 marks that he wanted this poem to be placed at the end of all his collections in the future which would be printed published after he was no more and those editions of his poetry should have crossing the bar at the very end therefore this particular poem is seen essentially as his final words it's a short poem but very deep in terms of its impact right just four short stanzas 16 lines in all now in the poem as i said the poet is kind of looking forward to his death but he is not shunning it most of us fear death right i mean obviously none of us want to die even though death is a certainty in everyone's life but he's not fearing it he's not shunning it right he's comparing death dying to crossing of the sandbar the sandbar essentially is between the coastal area and the wide sea or the wide ocean now basically it's the ridge of sand and you would you should know the definition of what is actually a sandbar because again that's something which you should include in your answers now sandbar is the ridge of sand built up by currents along water currents along a shore and he uses the poet uses that to describe the barrier between life and death so which is why crossing the bar now why does the poet look forward to death you would you would ask now why is he not intimidated why is he not scared by the finality of death because death is something very final there is something very complete about death largely because of lord tennyson's own religious faith and beliefs his belief in god and he knows that once he is no more he will be due to meet the creator that is god so because of his intense religious belief that's why he's not intimidated he's not scared is not fearful of death now why was Tennyson in that frame of mind in 1889 when he wrote this poem a reason apart from his age uh, also could be that this was written in 1889 when he was visiting the Isle of Wight W I G H T and he was suffering from illness at that point in time and though he recovered from the illness it made him realize that he could be nearing his time on earth right so that was his frame of mind and again this is something which is very relevant to this poem so you should know the background to in what frame of mind he actually wrote the poem because again this could be part of your answers the other important aspect is that this is an allegorical poem and uh, a story uh, which essentially means an allegory means a story a poem or a picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning and typically this is a moral or a political kind of a 
story, tale, poem or photograph, right? So that is the meaning of the word allegory and sometimes it does come as to what you give a critical analysis or describe it as an allegory and once you go through the poem, you will understand which are the different allegorical references. Also, there is a superficial meaning. Uh, and there is a deeper meaning you know one of course is a very literal meaning and then there is a deeper meaning so it obviously so it kind of operates at two different levels it may seem on the surface just like yet another sea journey but the deeper meaning is about its linkage to death that the poet makes about going beyond death to a new world almost like a new life afterlife is almost like a new life for Lord Tennyson. So let's start with the poem, stanza number one, sunset and evening star and each and every word of every, in every line of this poem is relevant as a keyword. So you would do well to kind of underline many of these keywords, which you should, as a matter of habit, use it in your answers, irrespective of whether it is an eight mark answer question or a six, 15 mark question. Sunset and evening star and one, clear call for me one clear call and may there be no moaning of the bar when i put out to sea now sunset symbolizes what sunset symbolizes the end of the day but in the larger context it also symbolizes the end of life we all often refer to as a sunset years of my life which means you're almost waiting for the end to come activity comes to an end at the end of the day and darkness after sunset is kind of equivalent to the end of life, the last stage of life. Now the evening star uh, is seen as a symbol of calmness, right? Uh, that is before the ship starts, there is a final call, one clear call for me before the journey starts. So this journey is the journey which is making from life to afterlife, which is death. And he, the one clear call is a reference to the call from the other world. That is the world that he would pass on to uh, travel to once he is no more, to come and embark on this journey once he is no more, that is crossing that bar, the sandbar, to move into the other world. So there is that literal meaning of crossing the bar, but crossing the bar also in terms of demise and going into another world. Now while he is making the journey to the other world, he does not want any kind of mourning or sadness or grief to be expressed over his passing away and may there be no moaning of the bar, bar as in that he has crossed the bar so let there be no kind of grief expressed at the bar. He does not want any pain or anguish, no murmur of the sea, the sea is the journey which he needs to traverse the entire distance in order to pass to another world. One clear call for me also means that someone is calling out for the speaker of these lines, that is a poet, and he says that it is a very clear call. He is understanding the language of the call very, very clearly. The communication is very clear as far as the poet is concerned and he understands that it is the call of death. The exclamation mark which has been put, normally exclamation marks are generally an expression of joy and some kind of pleasure, but the exclamation mark at the end of the second line also gives it that special quality of emphasis that he understands and it's almost with a sigh of delight that he's kind of listening and understanding the call, the clear call of death. Now, why is the sandbar, the morning of the bar, why is the sandbar a representation of crossing over a barrier of sorts? Now, the sandbar is the geographical structure that is formed at the mouth of the river, right? Before it go goes and joins the sea. Now the sandbar which is formed at the mouth of the river, so on one side you have the river water, right? And the other side you have the wide sea or the wide ocean, right? Now, so the river water is actually the representative because water is something which you need for life in general, right? River water. So that is representative of life. And the open sea is representative of life after death because that is not water which you can actually quench your thirst with because obviously it's salty water. So that water is very different from the river water. So river water symbolizing life and ocean water symbolizing afterlife. And the sandbar in between the geographical stretch is, is the path which you need to cross over in order to pass into afterlife. So in that sense the sandbar is a symbol of death where he actually crosses over. 
put out to sea means that he wants to cross over to the sea without any pain, any remorse or moaning or discomfort and definitely no moaning. Okay. I am using moaning and mourning. Okay. So, don't get confused between the two words. Now, another interesting aspect that I found was that planet Venus is actually known as the evening star. Okay. Uh, so, in that sense, it is not really, this evening star is not a star in the literal sense of the word. It is also known as the wandering star because it moves very quickly compared to other planets in the solar system. So, in that sense, by referring to evening star, which is actually not a star, Tennyson is referring to the journey of death, culminate, a journey of life culminating in death. Okay, so I hope the first stanza is clear. Let's now come to the second stanza. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and foam, when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. Now, the talk here is about a tide where there is movement, right? But there is no noise, there is no sound of that moment. So, it's symbolic in that sense of deep sleep and when you are asleep, you are generally static, you are in one place, there is no movement of the body. Eh? So, in that sense, it's a very soundless kind of a journey. Now, tide should be such that there should be no sound or foam. That is, the speaker wants his death to be very smooth, like a calm sea wave which is too full for sound and foam, the speaker hopes that his death will be silent, smooth and quick, making absolutely no fuss at all. Now, tide generally symbolizes obstacle because you know high tide, low tide. So, you know, it symbolizes some kind of obstacle for those who are at sea, especially fishermen. So, in that sense, it's hinting at some kind of a shift of life. That which he is talking about. When that which drew from out the boundless deep, it refers to the soul which is actually returning to its original home. He means to say that the soul actually belonged somewhere from where it came on to planet earth and now it is going back home. It is going to its original home. It had come to this world and now in a sense as we know, I use the word in today's context, making a ghar wapsi of sorts. It is crossing the bar from life to death back to its home. Uh, it also shows Tennyson's faith in his creator, his strong religious belief and faith. The boundless deep that he has used in the third sentence of the second stanza is a reference to the sea and in an allegorical sense it refers to the place where the poet will go once he is no more. Now if we see the second stanza, we will find that it is actually a continuation of the idea which he has spoken about in the first stanza, right? The same idea is actually continuing even though he has divided it into two different stanzas. And the last two stanzas, right, which when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home is kind of connecting to the last sentence of the first stanza when I put out to sea. You understand in, in terms of meaning, a deeper meaning, it's kind of connecting itself to the first stanza. Now let's come to the third stanza. Twilight and evening bell and after that the dark and may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. Now twilight symbolizes the end of the day. You know that's a time when sun has almost set and before it's absolutely dark, there would be that period of time when it is neither very bright nor very dark and that's known as the twilight hour. Uh, it's the interim period between sunset and darkness. Now, the evening bell that he is referring to out here, it is for, it's, it's a call for people to come out and pray, right? So, in that sense, it's symbolic of the death of day, end of life as far as Tennyson is concerned and you say, you know, the, ringing the death knell. So, dark in that sense is symbolic of death. Now, when I start on this journey back to my home, I don't want the sadness of farewell seems to be Tennyson's larger message, right? May there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. He's pretty emphatic and clear that he does not want any mourning. So in that sense, he's kind of reiterating the thought that he has expressed in the first stanza, no mourning of the bar. 
uh, embark the word means that he does not also see death as some kind of a final destination of any sort but in a sense a new beginning afterlife is almost like a new beginning as far as Tennyson is concerned uh, which is why I said the year in which he wrote is very important three years before he passed away so in that sense you could imagine that he spent the last three years kind of waiting and kind of preparing himself mentally for the time for the moment when he would actually cross the bar now the point point to notice in the third stanza is the passage of time between the first stanza and the third stanza and that's very important right uh, in the first stanza we hear sunset and evening star but by the time we come to the third stanza it is twilight and evening bell so that the time has passed from sunset to twilight right so it's an important passage of time which has already happened it is nearing dusk it is nearing darkness which is why the poet is able to hear the evening bell to indicate the approaching darkness uh, these are all very subtle things which you should know in order to appreciate poetry better and when you include these kind of poets uh, uh, points it will also show to the examiner that this student has understood this particular poem that much better than anyone else the poet wants twilight which is referred to in the first sentence of the third stanza to tell us about the state of his life that his life is about to end and twilight essentially is a very gloomy kind of a mood right neither bright nor completely dark so in that sense it has a slightly melancholic and sad kind of a quality about that time of the evening right uh, and it is giving you a sense and a peep into Tennyson's frame of mind while he's actually writing this particular poem sadness of farewell uh, could mean the fact that he does not want anyone to grieve over his passing away right uh, embark it means that he does not see the death because you embark on a journey supposing you are going from India to Singapore or to the US or to Britain or to France you say that you are embarking on a journey which means that you are not getting back after a journey so there is a difference so it means that he is also looking at after as at after life as some kind of a travel to a new destination right a new beginning of sorts the last answer for though from out are born of time and place, the flood may bear me far. I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Very significant lines. Even though I will be going far from this time and place is what Tennyson is saying. Floating on the tide of death. Hmm? Uh, he is referring to the pilot in his journey and the pilot in his journey is God which shows his own very strong religious faith. Um, crossing to the other world means life beyond death leaving um, uh, this world uh, basically uh, time and place which kind of you know this world is essentially uh, kind of bound by time and place you know it is we human beings which have named a particular place as this is Mumbai this is Washington this is Malaysia this is um, uh, Australia so in that sense we have given names to places similarly we have devised that this will be the time in India at any given point in time at the same time this will be the time in Dubai right so we have given the correlation of time and place but once he has crossed over to the afterlife there will be nothing called time there will be nothing called place right there will be completely meaningless bone essentially means a limit or boundary uh, so the reference to the is to the flood of death the flood that he is referring to in the second line of the fourth stanza is referring to the flood of death so in that sense it's almost a very overwhelming kind of an emotion because flood is essentially a word which shows that it completely drowns you it completely overwhelms you we say we use the phrase a flood of emotions right similarly and flood also in a literal sense completely overwhelms you which is why he's saying that once he's there he will be completely overwhelmed by that kind of a journey into afterlife i hope to see my pilot face to face again a reiteration of the fact that he is not afraid of death he is not afraid and he wants to see and meet his creator the controller of his life uh, and pilot is also an important word because he's almost imagining a flight back home to his original home right from where he came to earth so in that sense he's looking at it as a journey as a flight of sorts 
a takeoff. So in that sense, it also is also kind of conveying a sense of exuberance as opposed to the grief that people express when someone passes away. Once he has crossed the difficult sandbar in order to meet his creator. So this stanza essentially shows that Lord Tennyson had made his peace with death. He was completely accepting of the fact that his time has come or his round uh, is very close. So he was at peace with the fact that he is going to meet his creator very soon. Now the last line when I have crossed the bar is an interesting kind of a usage of the spelling crossed. He does not use the spelling C-R-O-S-S-E-D but he says he writes C-R-O-S-T. Uh, on the face of it just like in the title crossing the bar it seems to be obviously a reference to crossing but since the manner in which it has been spelled uh, critics have interpreted that it is also evoking Christ and the cross. Jesus Christ and the cross. So the poem basically now ends on a positive note with the poet both accepting the finality of his death and also hoping to meet God in his afterlife. Uh, a few points uh, which would help you when you are writing a critical analysis and appreciation of this uh, poem. Uh, faith in God is a major theme in this particular poem and you Please note down all the take down notes from all the points that I have made. They would really help you. All that is what you need in order to put in a long format answer. Uh, it shows his belief in God. There is also a sense of calm about meeting his end and meeting God at the end of it. And being in kind of at peace with the fact that his end was very near. And that's one of the highlights of this poem. As an allegorical poem, outwardly it may seem like a sea journey as I mentioned right at the beginning. But there is this entire correlation to death, the ending of life. The theme of poem is death and faith in God. These are the twin themes of this particular poem. Uh, in terms of symbolism, the different poetic devices which have been used, in terms of uh, 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 poetic devices, there is a lot of symbolism, there are a lot of metaphors which have been used, symbolism like sunset, like twilight, the coming of death. Uh, then uh, you are talking about uh, boundless deep, uh, embark you know these are all symbolic of different things which you would want to highlight in your answers uh, in terms of uh, importance of the word bar itself that it separates life and death so in that sense it's a boundary of sorts uh, and it is suggestive of the hurdle which you need to cross in order to pass on to the other world uh, the word tide that he uses in the second stanza first line is also his experience of death that he wants a calm and a very peaceful kind of death. We spoke about home that at the end of the journey he wants to go back to his original home. Uh, floods again I explained that it is not the conventional flood but the waters of the sea and uh, far which he is uh, talking about. Uh, also bear me far uh, means the deep beyond the boundaries of time and place which he refers to in the first line of the fourth stanza basically suggesting something absolutely limitless. There is no, there are no limits to that. Uh, alliteration as a poetic device has been used. For instance, clear call, C, C, the usage of the same consonant, too full for sound and foam, F, full, foam, F. So those kind of alliteration poetic devices also you should be aware of. The other thing which I wanted to uh, tell you about is the um, allegorical meaning. Uh, one of course is the barrier between life and death that the dying man has to cross his bar in order to reach the other world and even though it's an unknown sea, Lord Tennyson is doing something very significant. He's referring to it as his original home, turns again home, right? Uh, hence the title, crossing the bar. If you, if you get a question about the title of the poem, signifies meeting death straight away without any fear, without any remorse completely at peace with the ending of life. Uh, so that is something, the crossing the bar, the title of the poem, you need to explain different meanings of this particular title. Now, in terms of form, this poem basically consists of four different stanzas and it uses the classical rhyme scheme of AB, AB. If you see, uh, evening star of the bar, asleep, boundless deep, bell, farewell, place, face you know so there is that aa for me to see foam home dark embark far bar so 
there is a classical AB, AB kind of uh, rhyme, uh, rhyming to it and uh, though he kind of changes in terms of the length of the sentences, the number of words that he uses in every sentence from stanza to stanza, that of course uh, changes but that's also with a view to kind of having an impact in every stanza as he kind of makes his point loud and clear. Uh, so those are uh, uh, the, uh, the kind of form which he has used in this particular poem but what is to be noted as I pointed out earlier that each stanza is kind of connected to the earlier stanza. They are not stand alone stanzas that you may find in some poems but they are kind of interconnected making a larger point and also kind of conveying which is why he wanted this poem to be placed at the end of all his future works because it's almost like his swan song that this is what you should remember Alfred Lord Tennyson by right. So that's uh, the description, the explanation, the summary of the poem. Be aware of the biblical themes, especially the usage of the word crossed right at the end of the poem and the fact that Pilate is essentially a Christian God. So it shows his deep religious faith and beliefs. That's again something which you should know about right. So uh, that's as far as crossing the bar is concerned. Uh, with this we have actually finished off all the eight poems uh, which are part of the 2021 ISC syllabus. There will be two more poems which will be part of the 2022 syllabus which we can do later. Uh, so I hope all these eight poems which we have done in a very exhaustive manner will be of use to you and you would do well to take down notes and be able to do justice to all the question answers that you get in your examination. We will discuss the question and answers closer to the board examinations once we have finished with all the stories as well as the Tempest. Thank you very much for watching.